Hey everybody. So today I wanted to show you how to debloat Windows 11. So I'll show you what tool you can use to debloat Windows 11, what programs and apps it's going to remove from the Windows 11, and how to run and use that tool to make your Windows 11 run quicker and smoother so you don't have all that extra software that you don't need. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you exactly what steps to take. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go onto the internet. Now you can use any web browser that you want to. You can use the Microsoft Edge, which is included with Windows 11. You can use Chrome, Chromium, Firefox, Opera, maybe even Internet Explorer if it still happens to be on your computer. You get the idea, any of the web browsers that you would prefer. I'm just going to go ahead and use Microsoft Edge myself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I need to go to a search engine. Now you can use any of them you want. You can use Bing, you can use Yahoo, you can use Google. I personally am going to use DuckDuckGo. So I'm going to go up here to the top and type in DuckDuckGo.com and press enter. And then it's going to pull up. And then I'm going to do a search for S-Y-N-C-E-X space Windows 10 debloater. And then I'm going to press, you can either press enter or you can click on the little search icon. Now, I know you're wondering, why are you searching for Windows 10 debloater when we have Windows 11? Well, there's a good reason. It's because this Windows 10 debloater works perfectly with Windows 11. I've used it multiple times and I've had no problems. And under the hood or all the code for Windows 10 and Windows 11, they're very, very similar. And so the Windows 10 debloater works great for Windows 11 and it'll do everything you need it to. Now, I'm sure at some point they'll release a new version of Windows 11 that'll require us to download a different Windows 11 debloater, but for right now, this Windows 10 debloater is going to work perfectly. So the one I want to use is this very first one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on it because it's from GitHub. This is the one I really like. The reason I like this one is it has a GUI or graphical user interface. It has a nice interface for everybody to make it really easy to determine what you're removing and what you're leaving. So that's the reason I choose this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on code right here and I'm going to click on download zip. And what that's going to do is it's going to download a zip file that has all these files in this one folder because that's what's needed in order to be able to run this Windows 10 deep loader on Windows 11. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download zip. And then if you'll notice, it'll start downloading in the top right corner. Now that it's finished, I want to open it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little folder right here. And then it's going to show me my zip file. Well, we need to get the information out of the zip file. So what we need to do is we need to extract it. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to extract all, and then here you can choose where you want to put it. Now, if you'll notice, it's going to put it in the C colon backslash users backslash IT 101 backslash downloads backslash Windows 10 debloater dash master. Now, you'll need to know that later on. So if you want to right click on it and copy it, that might be helpful because we're going to need to use that here in a few moments in PowerShell. So now that you've copied it, you can go ahead and click on Extract. Okay, now it has finished extracting those files. So it's in a folder, another folder, <laughs> I know ironically, called Windows 10 Debloater-Master inside of a Windows 10 Debloater-Master. Now, we'll leave it there, that's fine, but if you go into the folder, there's all your files. 
So now what we need to do is we need to open up PowerShell. So we're going to click on the start button down here. And then we're going to type in PowerShell. And then it gives you the top result is Windows PowerShell. So I'm going to click on run as administrator. Now, if it prompts you, is it okay for Windows PowerShell to make changes to your device? You do want to click on yes, because this will allow us to make all those changes with the deep loader tool so we can remove the programs that we don't want. Okay. So here, we want to run one command, which is right here, which is set dash execution policy space unrestricted dash force. So I'm going to type that in up here. So set dash execution policy space unrestricted space dash force. And then I'm going to press enter. Now it doesn't look like it did anything, but it actually did because now it's going to allow us to run the PowerShell script so it can bring up that GUI so that we can debloat the Windows 11. So now what we need to do is we need to actually run the Windows 10 debloater. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in CD space. And I, if you remember earlier, we copied that location where we extracted the files. So all you have to do is press control V on your keyboard and it puts everything in for you. And now you can just press enter. Now we do need to go into the folder that it, remember it extracted it and it put it in another folder. So we have to go into CD space windows 10 the bloater dash master and press enter and so now we're in the folder that you can see in that window where it's got all those files so now we can just run the gui interface so we just put period backslash and then we type in windows 10 the bloater gui dot ps1 and then we press enter. Now this is a security warning and it wants to know, do you not want me to run this script? Do you want me to run it once or do you want me to suspend it? Now, if you just press enter, it's not going to run it. If you can see right there, it's got a D, which means do not run. Well, we do want to run it. So we're going to put in an R on our keyboard and we're going to press enter. And then in just a second, it's going to bring up that GUI. So here on the GUI interface, you can see the top three things are what lets you debloat the Windows 11. Now the others are just extra features that are very helpful. You can revert registry changes, turn Cortana on or off. You can enable or disable the Edge PDF where all your PDFs open in Microsoft Edge. You can enable or disable the dark thing. And then you can uninstall OneDrive, disable telemetry, remove bloatware registry keys, unpin the tiles from the start menu, and install .NET version 3.5, which may be needed for certain programs. You may need to have that .NET version 3.5. Well here, what I'm going to do is we're not going to do any of the extras. We're just going to do the bloatware. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on customize block list so that you all can see it. Because normally you just click remove all bloatware. But maybe there's a few that you don't want to remove. So we're going to click on customize block list. Now in just a moment, you'll be able to see that. There it is. And you can go down and you can tell it anything that you want to keep or anything you want to remove. And so if you'll notice, each one of these has a check on it. But let's say you don't want to get rid of the Windows calculator. Well, just uncheck it. Maybe you don't want to get rid of the Windows Store. Just uncheck it. And then you can just save the custom allow list and block list to the custom dash list dot ps1 
And then when we go back to the GUI, we can just tell it to remove the bloatware based off of this custom list that we just made. And it's going to remove everything else except for those few that you unchecked. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. Uh, again, all I did was uncheck Windows Store and I unchecked the calculator right here, the Windows calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then in just a moment, I can go in and I can remove all that bloatware. So now that I've saved it, I'm just going to click on the little X. And then I'm going to remove the bloatware with custom block list. And then if you'll see right over here, it's going through and removing all that bloatware. And so at this point, you just let it run. So we'll give that a few moments. Okay, so it just finished removing all the bloatware. As you can see right here, it says bloatware removed. So all that bloatware that you picked to remove is now gone. Now, if you just did a remove all bloatware, all of it's gone. If you did the custom block list and then you told it to remove the bloatware with the custom block list like we did, then all the ones that you selected and left the check on, all those are gone. And the ones that you unchecked are still here. So if you'll notice, if I go down here to start, there's my Microsoft Store and there's the calculator because I left both of those. And you can leave other things too. I think Microsoft Paint was one of them. You can leave that. You can choose to leave the Xbox. There's a whole list of them if you decide that you want to leave them. But that's how you can remove any of that bloatware that you don't want or don't need. And then you can go and install just the programs that you want to have on here. And then you can also go back over here and enable or disable Cortana or do any of these other things if you don't want them. So I really hope that was helpful for you all on how to debloat your Windows 11 using that Windows 10 debloating tool. If you do have any questions, please let me know down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to get back with you and help you out with those. And if there's a video that you would like for me to create for you, please let me know that down below in the comments as well. And I'll do my best to create that for you. And as always, because you all do such a great job, if you can, hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting up more great content like how do I debloat my Windows 11 and get rid of a bunch of those programs that I don't want. And I'll be glad to keep putting up more great content like this for you all. Thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye.